Welcome to the Respiratory Emergencies module of this series. Respiratory Emergencies does make up a large number of questions on the exam. A total of about 18 questions, not, not about, 18 questions will be on the exam regarding respiratory emergencies, which knowing that you have to take 150 questions means that 12% of the exam will be respiratory. So this is not a small area and one you'll wanna pay careful attention to to make sure you get all those questions right. Now, as we've done in all the other modules, we're gonna start with a challenge question. Ready? Symptoms of aspiration pneumonia are most likely to show up in what time frame after that aspiration? A, 15 minutes, B, six hours, C, 48 hours, or D, five days. Have you ever thought about that one before? <laughs> now you have to think about it. All right, I'll give you the answer in a little bit. I just wanna start with a really, really high level of ABG interpretation. And I'm not gonna to get too deep here just because we don't have time. I will talk a little bit more about advanced ABG interpretation in a few minutes, but let's just do a high level overview of ABGs. So you might remember with ABGs, there's you know kind of three or four basic things that we um, measure in ABGs. Of course, serum pH is one of them, and serum pH is normally, if the patient has a normal blood gas, is 7.35 to 7.45. Now, bicarbonate is also measured in blood gases, and it's really used to measure the metabolic side of ABGs, and normal bicarbonate is 22 to 26. Now, we also can use base excess to measure the metabolic side. And some hospitals will use bicarbonate, some will use base excess, some will use both. It just depends upon your facility. But for the exam, you might wanna be familiar with both. So both bicarbon base excess measure the same thing. They measure the metabolic side of the equation and they tend to go up and down together. So if bicarb is elevated, then the patient may have um, and, and, and a base excess, if bicarb is low, the patient may have a low base excess or what we would call a base deficit. Now normally base excess is between minus two and plus two, that's normal. And then the last thing that's measured with ABGs is the PaCO2. And PaCO2 is normally 35 to 45, and that one's used to measure the respiratory side of your blood gas abnormalities. So those are the four main parameters used to monitor arterial blood gases. Now, as I sure you remember, there's four basic blood gas abnormalities, and they are respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. So let's quickly look at these. Respiratory acidosis is going to be due to a retention of CO2. So the patient doesn't blow off CO2, and that CO2 in turn um, combines with free water in the body to make an acid and that causes the pH to go low. So the patient with a respiratory acidosis is going to um, have a low serum pH, normal bicarb, normal base excess. Now why are those two normal? Because this is respiratory and bicarb and base excess measure the metabolic side of the equation. So bicarb and base excess are only altered if the patient has a metabolic problem, this is respiratory, so they'll be normal. And then the CO2, we already said that it is a retention of CO2 that causes respiratory acidosis. So the, respiratory, so the CO2 will be high. So serum pH is low, bicarbon based excess are normal, CO2 is high, and that's a respiratory acidosis. Now what would cause respiratory acidosis? Well, anything that causes a retention of CO2 hypoventilation, asphyxia, CNS depression. Now a respiratory alkalosis will just be the opposite. The patient doesn't have enough CO2, they blow it off. So when they blow off CO2, that causes acid to break down in the body and then the serum pH goes above normal, above 7.45. So on a respiratory alkalosis, the serum pH will be high, above 7.45. Now again, this is respiratory, so bicarbonate base excess are unaffected or they're normal, and the CO2 is normal because the patient is blowing it off. So things that would cause a respiratory alkalosis is anything that causes the patient to blow off CO2, like hyperventilation, a fever, because we breathe fast when we, when we have a fever, or any drugs that cause tachypnea or an increased respiratory drive. 
Now those are your two respiratory abnormalities. Let's talk now about the metabolic abnormalities. So metabolic acidosis. A metabolic acidosis is where we accumulate acids in the body. There's different ways that we can do that. Um, you know, we can um, accumulate acids in the body by lactic acidosis. In, inadequate oxygen in the body is going to create lactic acid, which is an acid, right? So anything that, that causes um, hypoxia is going to tend towards a metabolic acidosis. Um, what about overdosing on a drug that has known to have acid in it, like acetosilic acid, aspirin, and overdose on that one? Um, what other kinds of things? Um, oh, DKA is another one, right? Because with DKA, you break down fatty acids, and when you break down fatty acids, a hydrogen ion is released. If you're not familiar with that, I talk about that a lot in the medical lectures. So, with a metabolic acidosis, what's the pH going to be? Below normal or above normal? Well, I mean, remember, acidosis causes the pH to be below normal. That's what makes it an acidosis. So the, uh, so the pH will be below 7.35. So it's going to be low. Now, is it going to be bicarb or CO2 that's going to be affected with the metabolic acidosis? Well, bicarb, right? I already said that. Your CO2 is respiratory. Your bicarb is metabolic. So we're going to see differences in the, in the metabolic. Now, will the bicarb be high or low with an acidosis? Well, the bicarb would be low, right? Because bicarb's a buffer. And so if you're acidotic, you need buffer to try to fight the acidosis. So you're going to be using up that bicarb to fight the acidosis. Therefore, you're going to have a lower bicarb. So what's base excess going to be? Well, remember I said that bicarb and base excess go up and down together. So if bicarb is low, base excess will be low. So how does a metabolic acidosis look? Low serum pH, low bicarb, low base excess, but overall the CO2 will be normal because this is a metabolic and not a respiratory problem. Now the last blood gas abnormality we'll talk about is a metabolic alkalosis. Um, so uh, metabolic alkalosis uh, can be caused by things like diuresing because when we diurese, we pee off all our hydrogen. And so the less hydrogen you have, the more alkalotic you'll be. So diuresis uh, can also be due to um, excessive vomiting because there's a lot of acid in the stomach. So if you're throwing up, you're throwing up your acid. Uh, and then IV sodium bicarbonate using excessive IV sodium bicarb. So in a metabolic alkalosis, will the pH be high or low? high, right? Because alkalosis is above 7.45, so it'll be high. And then the bicarb and base excess will be what? High or low? They're going to be high as well. Because if you're alkalotic, you're not using your base to neutralize acid, because there is no acid. You're alkaline. So therefore, bicarb's not being used, and it will tend to accumulate, and you'll have high bicarb. So serum pH, bicarb, and base excess will all be high, but PaCO2 will be normal. Now, if you're watching on video, look at the screen. Um, you can see how all the arrows are facing in different directions. But you can actually use this table to create a mnemonic that really helps make blood gases make more sense. Some of you may have heard of this mnemonic before, but a mnemonic is Rome. R-O-M-E. Now, how do we use the mnemonic? Well, how Rome works is that what Rome stands for, the R-O is for respiratory opposite, the M-E is for metabolic equal. Now, what does that mean? Well, look at the arrows and how they're created. In the respiratory disorders, so respiratory alkalosis and respiratory acidosis, the arrows face in the opposite direction as the CO2. So notice in a respiratory acidosis, the pH arrow is down, but the CO2 arrow is up. And in a respiratory alkalosis, the pH arrow is up, but the CO2 arrow is down. So in respiratory, the arrows face in opposite directions. But what does the ME stand for in Rome? Well, metabolic equal. Because look at the face, how the arrows face in the metabolic disorders. In metabolic acidosis, the serum pH is down, but so is bicarbon base excess. They're all facing down. And in a metabolic alkalosis, they're all facing up. 
So Rome is a really easy way to remember how um, to, to interpret blood gases. If I try to summarize this, remember any acidosis will make the arrow face down because you're going to have a low pH. Any alkalosis will make the arrow face up. Now if it's a respiratory problem, just put the arrow in the opposite direction for CO2 and you'll get it right. For a metabolic problem, put the uh, arrows for bicarbon base excess in the same direction as the pH and you'll get it correct. It's a really cool little mnemonic and hopefully that made sense. If not, you may need to rewind and listen to it again.